We're talking now with um, Tom Horn, who is uh, an ISS flight controller, the first one we've had so far this mission. He uh, works on the Thor um, console, that's Thermal Operations and Resource Officer, right? Yeah, that's correct. Why don't you tell us what that means? Uh, so Thermal Operations and Resources, effectively, we're responsible for the cooling of the International Space Station, um, just like your computers and electronics and lights, they generate heat at home. In space, that heat has nowhere to go. So the Thor officer is responsible for removing the heat that's generated by literally everything on the space station and rejecting that heat to space. What do you mean it has nowhere to go? You think mm. you know, there's plenty of space, obviously. There is, and that's actually the challenge is to get the heat um, collected from the various avionics and computers and lights um, and equipment and payloads and science experiments and move that heat to space and radiate it out into space. And the way we do that is actually via, like probably many of your computers at home, via um, liquid cooling loops. On the inside of the space station we have water cooling loops with pumps that run through all of our avionics, uh, collect that heat, reject it to the external cooling loops, which are with ammonia, which is a very toxic substance. Reject it? Do you mean just move it to the loops? Uh, yeah, and, and how that works is there's a uh, um, heat exchanger, and effectively you have um, water pipes that will run all throughout the space station, um, through every module, and they'll be, be effectively metal plates that every piece of equipment will sit on um, that will be directly adjacent to water that is moving by, and the equipment will transfer heat because it's in contact with the water as it moves, as it moves by and collects that heat, and it will dump it. at one place at something we call the interface heat exchanger, which is where the heat that's collected from all over the station is in one point rejected to the external cooling loops, which run on the outside of the space station. Um, based on the fact they're outside the space station, we're able to use um, a different uh, chemical, ammonia, uh, which is able to get much colder and allow us to handle a lot more heat and not freeze, importantly. And from there, it's moved around via our external cooling loops all over the space station and it's sent to one point, which is the large thermal radiators, which um, are pointed away from the sun at all times. And then from there, through radiation, our heat is just sent off into space. How's, how different is that from what happens on Earth? I think most people probably don't know really how their air conditioner works, right? So one of the things that, that's very hard in, in space as opposed to Earth is, you may remember this from your high school physics class, there are three methods of heat rejection, of, of the way heat is transferred between you and the air, you and water, um, and they are conduction, convection, and radiation. Um, so both conduction and convection require a medium for you to reject heat into. For example, if you are surrounded by water, you can reject heat into that water. It is adjacent to you. You're in contact with it. You can reject it. Unfortunately... And then if the water moves on, somewhere else it's gone. Exactly. And when the water moves, it takes the heat with it. Unfortunately, when you're in space, there obviously you are surrounded by nothing. You are in the nothingness and vacuum of space, and there is nothing to reject that heat into. Therefore, that leaves you with a, a, a very... Um, poor method of heat rejection compared to the others, radiation by itself, which is where um, very slowly and you naturally, heat will just radiate away into the nothingness of space. Um, it happens slowly. It's why we require uh, radiators, which are as big as they are, which you may have seen them in the downlinks. They are seen them in the videos coming down. Uh, they are the large white rotating objects that have uh, three radiators on each side of the space station. They are with each of the uh, solar arrays, basically, or between um, them kind of? They're actually, they're closer to the middle of the space station than the solar arrays are. The solar arrays are on the far wings, and uh, directly adjacent to them, uh, um, closer in, are the radiators. Okay. And they're pointed out towards the Russian segment. Okay, so what, what happens if you don't have thermal control? Now, if you don't have thermal control effectively, uh, your, your equipment breaks and melts. Um, s slowly but surely, if, if, for example, a pump was to fail um, and your, your heat was stopped being rejected, and then, for example, just a typical computer on the space station would get hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually it would, it would destroy itself. So um, we're something that, that operates largely in the background of the space station, but when we break, unfortunately, uh, it has wide-ranging impacts all over. 
Okay, so pump module failure, that sounds familiar. I think we had one of those not too long ago. Uh, yeah, this was actually on, um, on part of the external cooling system. Is as, as you know, on the International Space Station, redundancy is very important. Uh, we typically have at least two of everything. Um, and they're divided into a series of strings. Effectively, for redundancy, you can operate on one string of hardware or the other string of hardware. So um, one of the cooling loops that cools effectively half of the space station, which we called loop alpha, or uh, failed. And the failed pump module uh, effectively removed cooling to uh, roughly half of the, of the equipment from everything from, from uh, payloads to power boxes to science experiments uh, was removed. Um, it was a well, it was an interesting time as, as very quickly we had to save systems across the entire breadth of space station um, transfer. Were you, were you working then? And yes, yeah, this is something I had the, I guess the unfortunate pleasure to be a part of. As uh, yeah, I, I came on shortly after that the uh, pump failed, and so very quickly we had to. Um, a power down equipment that was in the process of burning itself up, of getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and possibly causing repairable damage to equipment all over the station. Um, we had to very quickly um, activate as many redundant systems as we could, since because of the loss of cooling, we had to power down things all over the station. Uh, so pretty much uh, for a while there, until we got that failed pump replaced, um, station was limping along on effectively for a lot of critical equipment, half of what it had prior to that. So it was it was definitely a huge failure for Space Station. But fortunately enough, um, we managed to get a, a spacewalk out there pretty quick and managed to get that pump replaced due to the smart work of some astronauts. Yeah, a happy ending. Absolutely. Um, and, the, and actually, the uh, the spacewalkers today did some work with that failed pump module, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for the, the, the spacewalk, when they were replacing it, uh, they stowed the failed pump module temporarily on a place on the space station and today they were going and just um, moving that pump module to a place that was more conveniently stowed as well as giving it a possibility of being returned on one of the future spatial missions so we can analyze on the ground and figure out exactly what went wrong because right now we're still um, we haven't had anybody have the chance to go actually dig into the depths of what what went wrong in this pump and why it would fail so Hopefully we can get that thing down on one of our two remaining spatial missions and uh, see what happens. Avoid that problem in the future, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And then if we can get it down and we can have our the engineering guys rip it apart and take a look at it and figure out what went wrong from that point forward, maybe we can prevent that problem in the future on our other pumps. Okay, well tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this is about my third year at NASA. And and for me, NASA was, all, it was definitely a dream job, as it is for so many people here. I mean, I've been... Um, space nut my entire life, just staring up at the night sky as a kid. Uh, I kind of fell into this specific job at NASA. Um, working in space was something I always wanted to do, but this was just a, uh, right after college, just trolling through online uh, online applications, found this one, thought, this sounds amazing, set up an application, and here I am. Hmm. Did you study engineering in school? I did. Uh, I studied a, a combination of physics, astronomy, and aerospace engineering. Okay, so good fit for your yeah, job. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like a, yeah, this seemed to be the place to go with us. Well, has it been everything everything you'd hoped? Absolutely. And there's something um, there's something unique about about this place and about mission operations. In that, uh, to give you an example, those radiators I mentioned earlier, uh, they're one of the cool things that I get to control because most of what I do is is I'll turn a pump on and off. I'll turn on some heaters. I'll I'll change some. Uh, some thermal set point somewhere and change the temperature of something. But when I send a command to those radiators and I tell them to move here, I can look up on, on the big screen we have in the control center, see those things moving, and you just get kind of a, a, a goosebumps moment where like, hey, I just pressed this button and those are moving up there. Yeah, and it's something that is definitely, it's definitely cool seeing the impact you have and, and how directly you're involved in, in the space effort that we have going on here. So, so far, you're happy with your career decision. Absolutely, yeah. There's very few places where you just get such a directly rewarding job where you do something and you instantly see the results and, hey, I did that. Okay, great. Well, I, th I think things have been pretty quiet for you this mission, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, this mission is a fairly quiet one for us, being a, mostly a supply mission, but we're following along and keeping everything running. All right. Well, let's hope it stays that way. Thanks so much for coming to talk with us. Absolutely. My pleasure. This again was Tom Horn with the Thermal Operations and Resources 
offer officer console yeah. in the International Space Station room. So we'll go ne back now to the uh, live coverage of the STS-133 mission. Thanks so much, and this is Mission Control Houston.